here is the escapement of the FMS Mauta. Yes, I am working on my bed. I'm going to fix that. This is just a minor bit of surgery. I'm getting really fed up with uh, it not keeping time properly, so I went ahead and took off the escapement, let it whir. And I'm going to see if I can show you. There is quite a bit of buildup there that needs to be cleaned off. So I'm just going to take a dry paper towel and scrub that all off. It's always knocking itself out of beat, so hopefully after this, maybe it'll stop doing that. But there's your look at the pallets. It is, in fact, a recoil, recoil or anchor. I'm really nervous. I'm not going to be able to put it back together. But I'm sure I got it. Just out of curiosity, this is what happens when you try and turn the hands with no escapement holding the gear back. It just runs. Probably should have been more careful about that. I didn't expect it to go as fast as it did. I'll be back when I get these pallets cleaned off. I'm sorry if I'm upsetting or pissing off any advanced clock enthusiasts. I'm trying my best here. Hopefully you can see there, despite my disgusting fingernails, I've done my best to clean it off. It was some nice, thick, chocolate pudding. And you can see a considerable amount of wear to these pallets, especially right there. Kind of tells you where the escapement wheel is supposed to be. The escapement wheel clutters back and forth. Or the escapement, actually. Just the pallets. The pallet assembly. And the crutch here. But yeah. This is the chocolate pudding I was referring to. Some here. Yeah. And then just some black oil. See, now I've taken off the base. I would take off the face so you could see the front there. I'm going to inevitably have to figure out how to do it eventually, but I need to get these two clips. These are, are not clips, but hairpins out. I think that's what they're called. But this one is just so horribly oriented, I can't fit my pliers in between the mainspring there to get it out. So unfortunately, until it comes time for oiling and I have to deal with however the hell I'm going to get this off, you can't see that. Here's the dial without the hands, though. I plan one day to try and replace this dial, if that's even possible. It probably isn't. But it's just... I, I might try Tommy Wiley's strategy with dial, dial making, if that... If it'll work. Might need a little bit of guidance, but... Yeah, this is just all scratched up. I got this for eighty dollars though, so I'm not complaining. I think it was eighty dollars or a hundred and twenty, I don't remember. Preferably I like to think it was eighty dollars. Okay, so in the assembly part of this, this has been the most pain so far. Trying to make sure the height of this lines up with the way it was before. If I were to take off the screws, you could see a little bit of metal in the brass where it originally was like that, but eh, I just went ahead and mounted this as high as it would go, and I'm going to see how it goes from there. That probably has something to do with the problem as well. Uh, maybe over time, it just slid down or something. I, I don't know, but we'll see. So scratch that, I lied, the suspension spring needs to be able to grip onto uh, whatever this part's called here. Uh, <laughs> I'm very clock inclined, but uh, needs to be able to hook onto there. So I need to lower this again. All right, so you wanna know what our problem was? I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out what was going on. You wanna know what was going on? I had this backwards. I didn't think of how the pendulum was going to be hanging and this is now in the correct orientation there you can see it hooked right on so my bad 
and I'm going to see how this ticks. And if it's ticking weird, I'm just going to shove this thing all the way back up the way it was before. It already looks lopsided, which is just not good. So I've been finding out this thing has to do with palette height. Every, every single uh, educated clock enthusiast is ripping their hair out right now, I assume. But I'm trying my best, man. I'm going to try putting this back in the wall. It's ticking rather fast. I think it might try and run away. I don't know, but we'll see. Okay, through lots of cussing, it's now going again. Let's see if I can get you a look at that escapement. That looks like there's a lot more recoil than there should be, but I'm going to go ahead and just let it run, see if it actually does run. I'm probably going to have to regulate it, most likely, but I think it will pay off. Oh, it's swinging way too slow. Okay. You've got to learn somehow. I adjusted it one last time. And I'm going to see how it goes for real this time. Probably going to have to regulate it. But I need to see how many times this is going to go for. Last count, I think that was seven though. Okay, I counted nine. Okay, so it actually was eight. Now I can go ahead and synchronize this. And we'll start right at 36 actually. Can you see that escapement? How's it looking? It should probably be recoiling a bit more, but I'm going to keep an eye on it and make any further adjustments if it needs it. So I hope you enjoyed seeing me mess with this or uh, enjoyed raging at my total incompetence when it comes to this. There's my clock owl, and uh, I need to get these thumb screws in, and then after that, I'm going to call it good. Now... For now, at least, I'm done messing with it. So, hope my clock owl there can keep an eye on it while it works. And hopefully, keeps better time. Probably need to mess with it more, but that's okay. That's part of the learning process. We gotta learn somehow. I'm 16, I've got a long way to go. So I'll see you in the next one.